from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. One eight hundred five eight hundred talk. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I just can't stop thinking about how <sighs> what's the word? I mean. I don't want to offend any of the people I know who are married. At the same time, I want to tell the truth. Well, I, I can only talk about other people I've observed. You know, if you ever go to one of those stores like um, L.A., we got a couple of stores. We've got one called Hustler Hollywood and another one called The Pleasure Chest. Dean knows The Pleasure Chest because he lives in the neighborhood. Right down the block. But uh, th- these are stores that uh, at every town has them. These are stores that sell their sex stores, their sex shops. And uh, at one time, these were, I don't mean these particular stores, I mean sex shops were darkly, dimly lit, creepy places that uh, always looked like they were on the verge of being busted. Kind of like head shops. Kind of the same thing. You know, you go to a head shop, and you always feel like, because there are so many paraphernalia laws, what have you, every time I'm in a head shop, I feel like the place is about to be busted. And I look around at the stuff, and I'm going, how do they sell this? How do they sell that? All the things with skulls and crossbones and all these bongs that are completely out of control. And they, they're calling them water pipes, wink, wink, you know. I mean, and I'm thinking to myself, how do these people even stay in business? Like, there's, aren't there cops around here? Don't tell me cops don't know this place is here. Selling this stuff has got to be illegal. It doesn't stop me from going in there, but I'm just wondering as I'm walking around, like, how do they do it? Do they pay off the cops? What do they do? And and that's what sex shops were once like, you know, because there was a time when selling vibrators could get you busted. And by the way, our listeners in Texas, as they know, it can still get you busted. Vibrators are illegal in Texas. Did you know that? Illegal. I heard an ad for these uh, vibrating condoms. You know, the vibrating condoms they sell? Who is it, Trojan or somebody? Vibrating condoms. Not available in Texas. Not available. That's illegal. So sex shops still have some of that element in some states. But in places like California where, you know, pretty much everything goes, sex shops have become more like staples. You go in, you hustler Hollywood has like fluorescent lighting. You walk in there, it's brightly lit big windows to the street you can see who's shopping in there (laughs) you can see what they've got to sell and what have they got to sell they've got lingerie with all kinds of slits and all kinds of locations they've got uh, every size and shape of vibrator they have got uh, creams oils potions they've got videos a dvd They've got books and magazines of photographs and and what have you. And I've been to Hustler Hollywood. I've spent time in there. And I have looked around at some of the other people. And I don't mean to offend the owners of Hustler Hollywood. Larry Flint's been a guest on the program, what have you. But i got to tell you, when I walk into that place, I look at some of the other people who are there. And I must say, many of these people look like married couples 
who have uh, you know the the magic uh, they've run out of magic tricks in their in their in their little toolbox, and they're trying to find some way to prop up the fumes that that remain from from their sex life that was fantastic how many years ago. I mean, I imagine like how far has it gone in my relationship with somebody that they have to come home from the sex shop having spent, you know, $160. Honey, I brought some of those oils. You rub them on and they get warm. Let's try these tonight. Now, to some people, that might sound really sexy. But to me, they just sound desperate. Like, there was a time, remember... All you married people out there, remember back when you didn't need lingerie, you didn't need oils or creams, you didn't need anything that plugged in or had a battery? Remember when you didn't need porn to get excited? Remember all you needed to do was look at the other person, and that other person was so hot, you just had to have them, and you would just, like, devour them in one fell swoop? Now it's like, honey... I know you like those porn DVDs, so I went down to the sex shop and picked a couple up. Maybe we can try them out this weekend. Oh, kill me. Kill me if sex ever becomes that for me. Kill me. Just kill me. And now all these stories about uh, chore play and telling guys, oh, do the dishes and maybe your wife will be more turned on or mop the floor or do the laundry and get tell your wife, oh, just take the evening off, honey. I mean, I say as somebody who's now on the outside looking in rather than a married person, you know, my life's not like that. I live in a home alone. I have two houses. I live alone. And when I have female company of any kind, when I have female company, I do not have to go out to a store to get them excited and buy items. I don't have to show them pornography. I don't have to rub creams or oils on them. I don't have to do anything. Not only that, I don't have to do household chores to get them to get turned on or to have sex with me. If they're not having sex with me, they're not invited to come over. Can I make that any clearer? The reason you're coming over. Oh yeah, we'll hang out, we'll talk, blah blah blah. But the ultimate the ultimate goal is we're gonna have sex. That's it. I'm not gonna have to jump through any hoops. I'm not gonna have to stand on my hind legs and beg. Like you're holding a dog biscuit over me. Uh, if you come over, I know why you're there. If I go to your place, you know why I'm coming over. If you don't want to see me, you just won't make me go through the motions. But the fact is, these people are shackled together. They are chained together. They've got a contract. They buy a house, making them further shackled together. Or they they sign a lease, or they are further shackled together. And then now that they're shackled together, they are forced to learn how to live together. It's like being just sent on a space shot with only one person of the opposite sex, and you're going to have to make it work with that person, no matter what. After a while, it's not such a turn on. So the idea of being married, sex in marriage, I don't care what people try to say, how hot they say they're keeping it, and how exciting it is, it sounds to me like just drudgery. I'm not surprised that so many people screw around. Because how could anybody get turned on feeling like they're obligated to be with the other person? Feeling like they're obligated to have sex with the other person. Feeling like they're obligated to say, oh, you look great, even when the other person looks like a complete slob. I don't get it. The whole thing is depressing to me. 1-800, do you agree with me or disagree? If you're married, you know better than I do, because I have been married for a while. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-866. Elizabeth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Um, I have a 
question for you. Yes. I want to, I have been with my boyfriend for about six years now. He's 37. I'm 27. Um, we both don't want children at all. And um, we just, we want a big house. And I don't mind if it's only his name on it whatsoever. I don't mind signing a prenum. Um, makes to me, I've always taken care of my own self, so I really don't need a man to take care of me or anybody at all. So I was wondering, what's your thoughts on that, um, getting married with the prenup? Why do you need a contract? I don't understand the need to have the state of California sign okay. off on your relationship and turn it into a contract. What, you love him anyway. You're with him anyway. Why mm -hmm. do you need to sign him to an ironclad contract? Um, I don't know. It's just kind of like uh, when you're younger, you just kind of you don't want to get married. I know I didn't want to get married, and it changed when I found him. It was really different. Um, he's my best friend. Um, but he's your best friend. You, did, you, did like need, you did not need you did not need a contract to become his best friend. That's true. That's true. And I want to I want to tell you something else that I know from experience. The minute you marry him, he will stop being your best friend. Your best friend will become your best friend. And because you'll start telling your best friend things that you won't want to tell him. And you know why you're going to do that? You're going to do that because now you have the ultimate emotional investment. And you don't want to lose the investment. So when he does something that offends you or hurts you or makes you angry, instead of telling him, you'll start finding other people to tell. Uh, I think with uh, a lot of girls, it's like that. Um, but not you. You're the exception to the rule. Well, you you know, have found true love, that. and all right. the other people, they don't know love the way you know love, right? Not necessarily. I just, I think that I have a lot more understanding when it yes, comes to men. Yes, you, you have more understanding about I men do, than others. I, I've learned a lot from you. I've listened to you for probably the last eight years. Well, then you should know getting married is a bad idea. Uh, I guess you're right. You're always right, Tom. <laughs> I mean, if you've been learning from me for eight years, when did I ever tell you to get married? I know. I guess you're right. You know what? I'll just, you know. I I'll mean, I have said I to women, and... there's a there's a benefit to you to get married. The benefit is when it doesn't work out, you could take his money. Not really. No, no, no. Well, I... yeah, you can, actually. I wouldn't be able to live with myself, Tom. I've never been like that. I never will. I, you know, I listen to your show, and I actually think that the women that hate you are the ones that have a hidden agenda. And the, well, the, the women who hate me are the women I'm talking about. <laughs> that's exactly true, and that's why pretty much every day when I'm bitches listening to hate me. Process, you know what I'm saying? Hilarious. And there are these women. Who, you, all women are not bitches. I know all women are not bitches. The the, the bitches are the ones who hate me. Yep, you're absolutely right. And they, you know what, Tom? I love to have fun. He loves to have fun. We have the same kind of idea of fun. I don't mind him looking at, you know, porn or anything like that. Let me ask you a question. If you're having such a good time, uh huh, why risk it? You're right. You're absolutely right, Tom. I, I, You know how many times I have said this to people in this situation? They say, oh, we're having a great time. The sex is so great. And everything we do is fun. And everything is... Why would you want to risk that? You're right. You're right, Tom. Enjoy it. Yep, we are. And you know what? I, it's you'll be awesome fighting. Having someone that doesn't want kids. So you'll be fighting I mean, over. You'll be fighting. It doesn't feel you have to be worth something to have a child. You'll be fighting over what kind of wedding cake to have and who to invite to the wedding. You'll be fighting over where to register. You'll be fighting over your relatives and they'll be his in laws and the ones who don't like him and the ones who do like him. <laughs> You could just continue enjoying what you have. Maybe you'll enjoy it forever. Yeah, I'd rather put the money on a house or something like that, not on a blow it on a four hour wedding. And the two of you could buy a house and put it in writing that you each own fifty percent or forty, sixty or whatever. But put it in writing. I don't mind. He can have it. He could put his name on it. It's all in separate. It makes no difference. Well, it'll make a difference if you put hundreds of thousands of dollars into a house and then, then you break up. I have a good enough savings, you know, so... Oh, boy. You are, you are young, dear. <laughs> no, I think if it makes him feel comfortable to have it, you know, his first home in his own name, you know, I, I want to make him feel as comfortable as possible. I'm not there to make it a and you torture wa you wanna help him pay You want to so. help him pay for it? Um, well, absolutely. I'm not going to make him pay for my, my way of living either. I have to live every day with or without him. Wow, so. wow, wow. Well, he's a very lucky guy. Unbelievable.
Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Tom Likas. Like, like Do you teach the guys no foreplay? Well, put it this way. I tell the guys, your main concern is getting what you came for. Oh my goodness, Tom, this is horrible. This is not romantic. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's not like a show. At 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. This is Danielle on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh. Hello? Yes. Tom Likas, how are you? Great. It is so wonderful to talk to you. I listen to you at every opportunity, and I wanted to let you know that. Um, your show has really given me a great understanding of the LA culture and the men. Well, first of all, darling, don't 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 uh, <laughs> don't get the idea it's the LA culture. I, I was born and grew up in New York City, and I have lived around the country, including um, Stanton, Virginia, Albany, New York, Miami, Boston, Phoenix, and Los Angeles. So well, I I have lived around the country. I guess why I think it's especially relevant to L.A. is because, you know, for someone, especially like yourself, that is, is successful and has money, um, L.A. has a constant stream of beautiful young women who move to L.A. They're going to be an actress. They're going to be a model. They're going to be this or that. And they're always going to come here. And, and they're always going to be kind of on the down and out. And, well, and, and L.A. is not, man. by the way, L.A., and I say this as a person of means, uh-huh. L.A. is not the only city with beautiful women. Uh, Dallas, no, right. has, Dallas has beautiful women. Uh, and a steady stream uh, continues to either be born in Texas or come to Dallas as a magnet. Uh, Miami is another city with an amazing Absolutely. number of beautiful women. Absolutely. So it's not just Los Angeles. No, and you're right, and that's actually where I was going to go next, is I think what you're saying is very relevant for a city. And and what I wanted to ask you, I really want your opinion on what do you think about marriage in a small town? And, you know, do you think that your philosophy would work for a man who runs out of women very quickly to sleep with? You know, I mean, don't you think the family structure is a little more important in those situations than it is in a city like L.A., like New York, like Miami, like Dallas. What's your opinion on that? I don't think there's any benefit to a man to get married. Not even, okay, so what if he's from a small town? There's no benefit to a man to get married. Okay, so what if, I mean, what if he's all alone? All of his friends from high school get married. There's not a steady stream of women going... There's a steady stream of women getting divorced, and they will be in the barrel again soon. And then they will be available again. Well, I guess the reason that I'm curious is because I'm from a small town and, you know, my parents have been married for 30 years. Your parents have been married for 30 years, but you're not even 30 years old. No, I'm, I'm telling you it's... that you're, in your parents' day, things were different than they are today. Well, I just That's see, in like, big my, towns and small towns. My brother's relationship is solid, and... Because he's your brother. I expect that your friends and that your family will be Uh, like you, okay? Because you're only going to be around people like you, because that's your choice. We're all around people like ourselves. That's how we are. No, I don't, I mean, I don't live, I don't live near my family now. But your family is like you. Right, but there's also, uh, I'm just saying, the culture that I grew up in is a lot different. than. Where did you grow up, dear? I grew up in rural Colorado. In rural Colorado. Yes, sir. Yeah, but 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 believe me, things are. If you think people aren't getting divorced in rural America, guess no, I'm again. Not it doesn't happen, Tom. I'm not saying it doesn't. No, happen. but it's happening a lot more than it used to. A lot more. Absolutely, but you know, there's still, and this kind of goes to the, back to the topic. Is this is what I'm getting at? Is I think the article about. Um, Chore play, I also think it's disgusting and sad. But I think where it becomes relevant is in those situations where the family structure is very important because there's nothing else to do. I mean, your family... Well, then then for some of those people, maybe they ought to move. Because what you're going to have eventually, 
is you're going to have people who can't afford to go to a bigger city, people who can't afford to have a better life. They are forced to stay together. I have said many times, marriage, I have said many times on this program, marriage is for poor people. But in marriages for somebody who who needs a roommate, they can't afford their own apartment. But Tom, what's the percentage of people in this country that are you know middle class or below? That's what uh, I'm right. is, you people know, in poverty need roommates, need and they have nothing to lose by getting married. Okay, so what you're saying is that uh -huh. marriage is good for the impoverished, and yeah, and that's not what I'm saying, Tom. That's what you said. Well, that's what you're saying without saying. No, no, I'm I'm kind of adding to what you said. What you said is that it's for the poor, but I, I'm it is for the hopeless. No, I'm going to tell you what's for. Marriage is for the poor, the hopeless, the people who will never accomplish anything in life. I don't agree with that either. I agree. No, I think that in it, it's not just being poor. If you're from a town where you're you're middle class and you're comfortable, but there's not a thriving economy, there's not a thriving nightlife. There's not a plethora of young, attractive people. Well, by, by mean, the way, I lived in a place like that. I lived in suburban. I lived in the suburbs. I'm talking the deep suburbs, 50 miles out from New York City, and yeah, and I must still the suburbs. No, no, the believe me, the the number of attractive know. people and the number of things to do at night were were very slim and still okay. are today. Okay. I've been there recently. They, they still are like that today. So what did I do? I got the hell out of there. Yeah, and, and that's but but I'm saying I could not be a multimillionaire and live in the town where where my family lived. I can't do it. But a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are in. in you know what? Community. I I can not only afford my parents' house. I could buy every house on their street and have money left over. How wonderful is that, huh? Hey, well, but that but, but then I, no. Well, here? here's how wonderful it isn't. Then I'd have to live there. Um, I wanted your opinion on something else. I've been dying to ask you this. Are you there? No, I left the room. <laughs> you can hang up on me like I'm tired of this girl. Heard it done before. Um, then I will proceed. My question is, what is your opinion on uh, spirituality with religion? Because, I mean, it was weird. I'm an atheist people... here. Okay, that explains a lot because a lot of people, they see it as not just a contract, but as being something part of something bigger. You know, if you believe in a greater good... Uh, no, 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 no. I believe in a greater good. I just don't believe that there's some guy with a long white beard sitting up in the clouds taking no, I notes. Either. I don't either. I don't either. But I and I don't believe that so getting high. married is for the greater good. I don't think. Uh, I think what, what getting married is it, the man is making life better for the woman, especially if things don't work out. Then, then somebody's life is going to be improved by that. But for a man, there are no benefits to getting married. Okay, what about this? Let me ask you this. I Okay, I'm a massage therapist. I'm a great cook. When I can rub my man down, cook him a good meal, like, how is that not improving his life? Well, because, you see, that. again, if you if I date you and you do that for me, that's fantastic. And I would say, gee, that's really great. But if I, you see, it's the difference between renting a car and buying one, okay? Uh, you know, if I rent a car and I get to drive it around and I enjoy that new car smell and I get to ride around town and let's say an upscale car like a Jaguar or a Mercedes or something really uh, hot, uh, people are going to go, look at you. You look great in that car. I'm going to say, thank you very much. And it's brand new. Take a look. Uh, now, if I have to, if I have to buy that car, I have to pay for it. What about this, though? Okay, so this is all appearance. Your Jaguar might look good to other people, but how do you feel in it? Now, how do you feel in, the, in like, a well, car? Well, the, the point is, I can rent a, I can, point is, I can rent there. another car next week and not have the, 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 have to pay for the insurance, not have to pay the maintenance on the car. I drive the car around and I give it back. So, okay, here's another question. What, I mean, I know I think I've heard you talk about this before, but what type of women do you date? Like, do you find hot. interesting or, you know, what hot kind of women, women are you drawn to? I date hot women. Hot what women. Personalities? Does that matter? Hot to women who are at least 10 years younger than I am. I'm not talking about looks. I know you date hot women. But now, darling, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Do you not want to talk about their personality? I don't care about the personalities. In fact, the less they talk, the better. See, that's the part that I, it just, to me, relationships are so, like, fulfilling, and they're very... Well, women love to talk. 
So it's very fulfilling. For me, relationships are annoying. And, and, and women never shut up. And, and they, they, if they knew it was good for them, they just shut up. I think if you have two people whose brains are vibrating at the same frequency, you just shoot off together, and all of a sudden, your, both of your careers are shooting no, off. No, no, because believe me, my yeah, career so my fun. career has never been hotter. I've never made more money than I do today, and I do not need somebody sitting next to me uh, in my 300-thread count sheets and and my vacations to Walt Disney World. No, but if I were married, that's probably what I'd be down to if my wife <laughs> spat me into to, to <laughs> poverty. You see. Hmm. No, I happen to sleep on 600 thread count uh, sheets today. Uh, did you ever used to have a waterbed like back in the day? Were you like, hey, baby? No. No, I did oh, not. Cool. No, I did not. In fact, even waterbeds. I, I would go to a hotel room for a waterbed, even in the day. I did not want to own one of those things because I didn't want to own it when it uh, sprang a leak. What's your, what's your, uh, what's That's a good reason not to get married. You don't want to be married to her when she springs a leak either. Oh, God. Um, how do you, like, do you do music? Like, what's your thing? How do you get a woman? How do uh, I get a know? woman? No, uh, how do you, okay, obviously you're not, you're not into the chore play, but, um. Chore play. <laughs> so, you know, do they just, like, jump on you? I mean, what, what's your move? Let's hear some of your moves. I have money, power, and fame. So they, you invite them over and they just jump on. Woo! You'd you'd be amazed here. <laughs> You're laughing. You're laughing. You know, I, I really I I want you to understand. I'm not joking with you about this. No, I don't think you are. I'm just having money, fame. power, and fame is all you need. But, Tom, what I was saying earlier is not everybody has that, and you're speaking this word. And I'm not saying everybody, but I, I have so never said that everybody does. But so those who kind of cheesy, and people call you father, and you say, yes, son. No, because on, guess what? I am the dad. I am the dad they never had. Oh, that's sad, though. But it's true. No offense, Tom. I Like I said, I re I'm entertained. I value a lot of things that you say. Mm. But I just think that really sad there's nothing sad about sad. it many of these guys grew up with single mothers and they were told that their dads were jerks or deadbeats or creeps and exactly but it's, guess it's what sad. what what mom forgot to explain was why she wanted to procreate with a guy who was a creep and the answer is if you want to get laid be a creep but see, I think that's that's the that's such a bad thing for a father figure to tell a son. I mean, if you have well, if their dad was a creep and got laid by their mom, there's a message in that. Well, and you're you're telling them the same thing. Yes, be a jerk. When you're a jerk, you're going to get what your dad got laid. Okay, so it gets you laid in instant gratification, and that's the main right goal of your show. We're hungry, but, we're horny, we're thirsty. That's how men are. But you, I agree. But you said earlier that you do believe in a greater good. How does your show? And I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm curious. How does your show add to the greater good? It, it does by having guys not be paying their money to 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 bitches who who will take them for right. everything they've got, uh, and uh, not to uh, take up all their time and and then telling them they're not going to have sex with them and things like that. <laughs> I, I agree, and I also think it, it keeps a lot of guys out of trouble, although they don't listen to you, Tom. They don't even Darling, listen yeah, to you. Darling, I'm a radio show. I'm not a cop. I can't reach out of the radio and grab people by the neck. But they still call you father. They do, <laughs> because uh, many people don't listen to their father also. But, but many, many more do. And we hear from guys all the time who thank me, and they tell me they're getting more ass than a toilet seat. And we have many guys who who, who got out <laughs> of have like nasty like feety particles on them. And it's so we nasty. have guys who got we have guys who got out of bad marriages and bad relationships thanks to this program. Oh, I think we've done good for a lot of people. I don't doubt that, Tom. I don't doubt that. All right, so there you go. Now you, on the other hand, you're you're what we call an attention whore. You've now eaten up thirteen and a half minutes on the air. And your entire conversation is a run-on sentence. Everything ends with and, so I can't hang up on you because you've jumped to the next topic. And your plan is to take up as much air time as possible. Hey, I'm just talking with you. You know, you, you hang up on people all the time. You did not hang up on me. Let's talk about Not yet, I have it. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM.
1-800-5800-866. I was just like that one guy that was waiting around for that one girl forever, and then it occurred to me why. There's tons and tons of girls out there. If one doesn't give it up to you, many more will. You know, you just got to find them and make it happen. Right? Why waste your time on one girl? It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. And uh, now that the summer is over, well, at least in the minds of people on the East Coast, the summer is over because, as we know, in Southern California, summer goes on and on into September and even October. We're just getting warmed up. But now the summer season is over, uh, the Tom Liger Show goes on the road again. Uh, we're going to be uh, heading off to Las Vegas with the Los Angeles Kings a little later this month. And also coming up, we're going to be doing the show from New York City. Why are we doing it from New York City? <laughs> God only knows. No, I'll tell you why. Because uh, I am going to the last baseball games at Yankee Stadium and Shea Stadium. Both those venues are going to be torn down. And although I'm not a New Yorker anymore and I don't root for those teams, uh, my brother is a Mets fan, and so I'm going to New York to take him to the last game at both venues. And I'm just going to be honest with you. That's what I'm going for. Because if we're up to me, New York in and out, or just plain out. But uh, later this month, uh, join me and find out uh, about my misadventures in uh, both Las Vegas and New York City here on the Tom Likas Show. We are talking about the uh, the situation in your marriage when you uh, are desperate. Those people who look so desperate, you see them in the sex shops. I know in Hollywood, uh, uh, you see them in that uh, Hustler Hollywood shop, and there they are going through the racks of a lingerie, slutty-looking lingerie and oils and creams and you know, various uh, vibrating devices and what have you. And you look around and you see people who are, frankly, you don't see people who are, you know, all sexed up and excited about their relationships. You see people who look like, it looks like the death march. Because I believe the more stuff you have to buy, the more gadgets, the more potions and lotions you have to bring into the bedroom, the more likely it is you are closer to the end of your relationship than the beginning. So, uh, I don't know, are you one of these people who, you know, is just desperate to keep it going? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's go next to Tangie. Tangie, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Doing okay, Tangie. Oh, that's good. I was calling just to, you know, make a comment towards a lot of people that listen to your show. And I think that a lot of them take it too seriously and really get too offended too fast. Like, they have to understand where your opinion is coming from. You have been married a few different times, so you have experience. You have a different, a different opinion on marriage. And right. instead of them getting all upset, just understand he had a different situation. It was negative. Like everybody else, if you have a negative experience, you're going to have a negative opinion. And instead of just getting mad and wanting to cut you out, they should listen here you understand your experience and think to themselves, well, if I still believe in this institution, I'll make sure I avoid that type of situation instead of calling in, well, why this time and, and why that time? Like, just relax and just go for it. This is this man's opinion. This is his experience. He's not saying, all oh, you guys have experience. This is my opinion and this is, this is my experience, so I'm going to say how I feel. And it just, it blows my mind. Like, that last girl that asked a thousand questions, I want to just, just hang up on her myself. So, attention you know, more, attention show. more. She's an attention whore. Yeah, you can tell. I'm just, well, what is this? And it was like, it was going nowhere. I'm like, come on, let somebody else call. But I want to say, like, everybody should relax. It's your opinion. They should listen to it. I, I enjoy your show. I think a lot of you think that you do say it from a male perspective. And you're either going to put it in your pocket and walk away with it or leave it on the table. And that's it. Like, don't call and say, Tom, you're a pig and all this kind of stuff. You're a man and you're expressing yourself. You listen or you don't. Exactly right. You know, so I think you should just keep doing everything I to you every day. And I'm still recruiting. I'm still getting some more black people for you. I'm out there. I love it. We need all the help we can get, Tangie. Right. So you keep doing your thing and have a wonderful day. Thank you, dear. Uh-huh. Appreciate the call. There she goes. Tangie. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Amy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Amy. 
I'm, I'm not going to ask you how you are because you got grumpy at people asking. True. But I hope you're good. I am good. Good. Hey, so um, I caught the tail end of you reading that article on my way home from work. And it sounded so antiquated. I thought that, like, you must have been pulling up something from one of those old 50s women home journals or something. No. Anyway, so then I got home and I found the article online. And, uh, you know, a couple of things I just wanted to mention that I thought were, you know, pretty dodgy. Um, you know, one of the things that they talk about is letting their wives have a half an hour to them. And then it's something else about being relieved of their chores, you know. And I'm thinking these women don't want to have sex because they're so broken down and owned by their men, you know, if, if they're allowing them that kind of break, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, good. So we agree. The other thing is, did you actually see on, like, the page where that, that article is posted? I, I guess it's an article targeted at married men, you know, telling them how to get more sex. Right. right. Do a little did chore you? play. Okay, did you see all over that website links to, like, chemistry.com and dating sites and stuff like that? Right. Yeah. Why would anyone want to meet a woman to get married if they just read that article? Well, you know, and the other thing is, it's like, okay, well, I don't get any sex, so I'll just click on this link and I'll pick up online, right? Right. Huh? Exactly. Right. There you go. Exactly. That's and you agree with me, so that's good. My husband was worried that you were going to get cranky at me. Why would I get cranky at you? You agree with me. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so uh, the guy or the girl who wrote that article, the other thing I didn't notice is they didn't sign their name to it. So, you know, I'd be kind of interested to see if it was a woman or a man, right? Me too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's all I got for you today. Well, good to talk to you, Amy. Thank you very much for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Stu on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? How you doing? Doing okay. I hate to admit it, man, but uh, you was calling, and my wife she scheduled sex for me tonight for eleven p.m. Man, I don't, I don't think I'm. You're you're it. scheduled in tonight for eleven p.m. Are you? Yeah, I got home from work around about three, and you know I was little, little up there, and I was trying to straddle her down. No, no, no. The kids will be getting off of school pretty soon. Can we wait? Can, how about 11 o'clock? You I mean, know, my you response to that is, it's not going to take that long. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You'll be you done. Know, You'll be happen. done and cleaned up in time. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, man, Tom, man. I'm telling you, man. I, I You know, it's, it's sad, man. This whole marriage thing. You know, I mean, you're hitting everything on the money, brother, because it's like before we got married... Sex was always available, always there, man. And, you know, now it's like the kids come, and then everything just comes to a complete halt. I mean, what is it, man? I mean, is that in the marriage decree that I, that I didn't read about? Is it in a fine print or what, man? It's just, it's just what happens when you are signed to a contract to do something. I was talking to a guy earlier. Maybe you heard this. and maybe Are you a sports fan, too, like I am? Are you a sports fan? Yes, I am, Tom. Oh, okay. How many times have you seen a player and he's in his free agent season, like he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year? And, you know, he he hits 70 home runs or he uh, he, he scores uh, 4,000 points in the NBA or he has uh, 40 touchdowns in a season because he, cause he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year. And then when the new team signs the big money contract, suddenly the guy can't perform anymore. <laughs> kind of like everybody that the Dodgers ever signs as a free agent. Kind of like that. I, I, I know, Tom. I, I know it's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm batting a thousand, and as soon as I say, hey, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to be a free agent and I'm going to sign up, man, and oh, my God. The minute you sign somebody to the contract, suddenly they can't perform anymore. E exactly, man. Uh, you know, there's a. It's the I, I nature it of is, marriage, man. it's the nature of the beast. Yeah, it's just it's incredible. I don't I don't know, man. You know what? But you know what? I commend you, brother, man. I mean, you know, you're doing a lot of good out there for all the guys, and you, you know, and it's just like I don't know, man. I got a slogan, man. It's just like you know what? You you never buy a pair of shoes. Don't buy a pair of shoes if you don't try them on first, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I like trying them on first and then putting them back in the box. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, I agree with you. Hey, Tom, man, I called your show many times before, man. And hey, listen, man, can I take myself out, man? Go ahead. 
hey, I'm going to take myself out. So, Brother Stein, I, I took myself out before, bro, but here we go again, man. Shut your goddamn mouth. I'm trying to listen to Tom Rikers. <laughs> <laughs> It's killing me. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Suzanne on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi Tom. How you doing? Great. Great. Well, I just I kind of had a general question. I've been listening to you for just a couple weeks, and my boyfriend listens to you religiously, and um, I agree with a lot that you have to say. He's actually a victim of some bad relationships that turned out uh, some kids, and he pays child support, and you know it's bankrupting him basically but um so i agree with a lot that you have to say and marriage um i'm divorced myself and it was a nightmare but i my question to you is are you really just anti uh tension whore anti gold digger or are you just anti women why how, how, how could i be anti women i like having sex i am yeah, heterosexual <laughs> Well, I figured that much, uh, especially with the color that you had just a little while ago. Right. Well, of course, I'm glad to hear it. But um, I, I just I, I hear a lot aside from you know comments which I agree with you uh, about you know the women that are gold diggers and they're just you know trying to look for a free ride in marriage, and I agree with that. But I also hear you refer to just women in general as you know you know expletives and you know other names. Well, I don't people. use expletives. So what am I referring to women as? <laughs> well, just women are bitches, and you know. I don't believe all women are bitches. Oh, well, good. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. There are women who are not bitches. Excellent. excellent. Those who are bitches. Those who those who are bitches get exactly what they deserve. Some like his show.